So the animation for season one of Jujutsu Kaisen was amazing. The choreography, the fight scenes, even when the characters weren't fighting, whether it was just dialogue or staying in place, so much detail was added as MAPPA really put their heart and soul into this adaptation. That said, watching the new trailer for the second season, there's evidently a major change from how it looks. And I just want to preface, if you think season one looked better than what we saw in the trailer, that's fine. I'm not here to tell you that your opinion is wrong. In fact, I myself will also miss some of the visual aspects that were significant in season one. However, I want to at least shed some light and hopefully convey to some of you, even if you already think it's great, why season two's new art and animation style can actually surpass the godly adaptation of season one. I know that might sound like an exaggeration, but I'll also dive into the previous season and compare and show some scenes as examples to help support why season two's new visuals are actually an upgrade in certain departments at least. To briefly go over the basics, this season is going to be directed by Shota Goshizona, a different director from the first season, who was Sung Ho Park, very talented for his action choreography, and a huge obvious change people notice right away is the art's simplicity. Compared to season one, there is a lot less line work, less shading details, and less highlights within the design of our characters. Now, it's not a bad thing, though I can understand if people miss those highly detailed designs, I do as well, since it fit really well with the dark tone and world of Jujutsu Kaisen. That said, I think this trailer also showed that a minimalistic approach can still maintain that dark cursed spirit atmosphere. We'll touch more upon that later, but the reason why the director Shota Goshizono is going for simplicity, well, there's two main possible reasons. One, it's likely because of the production constraints, as in the staff had to meet a tight deadline for the release. And two, which is basically a follow-up from the previous question, is to allow for an easier and more fluid animation. A simpler art style means that the animators don't need to worry much about the detail or intricate line work on the characters and background. Instead, they can focus more on making the movements a lot smoother, resulting in greater dynamic action sequences being made. Let's use examples from season one. Again, almost every aspect of its animation and art was spectacular, but if we had to nitpick, there were definitely composition problems and issues that just stem from the art style being too detailed. The panda versus versus Mechamaru fight is a great example. While it's nowhere near bad, it's for sure very busy with the animation looking stiff and choppy. Maybe the first time you watched Jujutsu Kaisen, you didn't really notice any other choppy scenes or bad compositing. I certainly didn't, but on rewatch, it's quite apparent. Aspects such as the awkward piss yellow filters, the CGI background, the bad textures with the environment, like the grass, trees, or the ground. And hey, as badass as this scene was, Megumi's domain expansion was also poorly composited. The color design choice made it very hard to see or appreciate the action itself. It was just overly distracting. And again, it wasn't bad the entire season. There were actually a lot of great shots, but unfortunately, the fight scenes had most of the bad ones. And had those visual elements blend well, it could have gone from a great looking fight to an even extraordinary looking fight. Now, compared to the new trailer, season two looks a lot better in the Baba Boy. department. The lighting, the colors, the visual effects, the background, it's more clean, clear, and appealing to look at, especially during scenes with comedy complex storyboards or the characters moving so fast, like it's able to maintain that consistent visual quality, which again was something that season one struggled with. I actually just found out while grabbing the clips, it seems like MAPPA changed the colors between the two trailers. So in the first trailer, the sky on Gojo is very teal, while in the second trailer, the sky is more blue. And it's kept the same when Gojo continues to break the window. In my opinion, the second trailer looks a lot better. I think the light blue sky really fits that young summer atmosphere atmosphere or spring whenever this arc takes place. So yeah, I guess the staff is still making some final decisions and touches, which is a good thing. But now let's talk about the action sequences because there's a huge difference in the movements being way more fluid in the trailer. Now don't get me wrong, season one did also have a lot of Sakuga work, but season two is just naturally going to be better for that because of its simpler art style. For example, one of my favorite cuts in season one was Keichiro Watanabe's fast momentum animation when Hanami 
started unleashing this huge branch attack against Yuji and Toto. This is the type of quick fluid movements we can expect for season two. Of course, not like every single fight on that same level, but somewhat. Because as you can see in this scene, the excessive detail and line work is definitely much less compared to the standard we usually see in most of season one. And that's because reducing the detail helps prioritize more of that dynamic motion. Like if you ever watched Naruto, you would know sometimes, specifically if the scene was very fast, that the art had suddenly got much simpler as it heavily emphasized the speed and intensity of whatever action sequence. That's the same happening with Yuji, Toto, and the branches. Even Yuji running and dodging Esso's winking attack, you know, it sacrifices detail in order to create a smoother presentation. Of course, there's a point where it can look too cartoonish, but I don't think it's ever going to look that way for season two. It never did for season one either. Examples of too cartoonish can be seen in some Naruto and or Black Clover fights. The animation is great, but the art is over subdued to the point where it's difficult to see what's going on and quite frankly, kind of looks like Play-Doh. I mean, art is subjective, so maybe some people actually like seeing that action sequences or again, some people like myself think it's too cartoonish. There's definitely a middle ground for creating those dynamic action sequences, but yeah, just seeing this shot of Toji running up on Gojo, the background art blends a lot better compared to season one. Of course, it also has the fish eye effect, which we'll talk more about later. But what makes this sequence very dynamic is the way Toji just occupies a small part of the frame for a split second. And then in the next frame, he occupies like 99% of the screen, eventually going back to being small and then swinging his blade close to the camera. This is very impressive. Usually when the character moves close to the camera at first, the scene just cuts right there, but it continues with having Toji doing extreme positioning shifts until Gojo uses his technique to catch Toji. What supports Toji's movements being fluid are these heavy smears. So in this other shot, look at the mix of smears, wind effects, and speed lines. These three techniques contribute to the illusion of motion, creating a more immersive experience and makes this launch of Toji visually compelling. It's what conveys the intensity and excitement of fast-paced action. But okay, moving on from that whole topic, the next thing I want to talk about is Go Shizono being the director. Listen, even though I'm going to miss Sung Ho Park's action, we should still be excited since Goso is very talented when it comes to approaching a scene with a unique perspective and generally having complex storyboards. For example, take this shot of an old man attacking Ghetto. As the man attacks and comes closer to the camera, the reflection from his glasses becomes his first person point of view and then serves as the next scene or the next cut with the Ghetto supposedly reacting to his attack. Like, that is insane levels of transitioning. No spoilers, but I did read the manga for this and Goso enhanced that scene in a way I personally would have never thought. Like, it really goes to show, again, the unique and creative vision that he has. There's one scene in the anime, Ranking of Kings, where a character is walking down the stairs, but Goso, he just animated that scene with a very over-the-top approach, making the viewers see that beneath the king's chair. And it just gives an appreciation for the extra steps that Goso attempts to make a scene more appealing. The director also loves doing fisheye effects, like this shot with Ghetto on the phone, and when Toji was launching himself towards Gojo. The fisheye effect or fisheye lens is a very immersive perspective, so given that we've seen it with Toji, it means that we may see that effect be used during fight scenes, which is an awesome thing because, yeah, I think that artistic style looks very cinematic. I believe he actually did a fish eye cut in season one. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's that frame with Megumi and his toes. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video how people miss the highly detailed designs because they fit well with the dark tone of Jujutsu Kaisen, and I agree. I think when it comes to close-up shots or casual scenes, that's what I prefer too. However, this trailer still showed that a simpler design can still match that atmosphere of, you know, curses and its dark world. Take this opening shot of Ghetto, for instance. His head turns slowly towards the camera and it gives an eerie and uncanny impression to the viewers watching. The little line count, minimal shading, slightly blurred background. It eliminates scenery distraction, having your eyes solely focused on the clear and ominous center of Suguru Ghetto. Now, that's not to say this season won't have detailed close-up shots. We do see that at the end of the trailer with Ghetto supposedly in the shower. So maybe in certain scenes, depending on what the emotions are, we'll get 
get more drawings on a character to highlight its significance. The cursed spirits are also highly detailed, just like in season one. So for a character like Hanami, whose design had a lot of line art and shading, it may be dimmed down a bit, but definitely not much like the sorcerers. And again, that's great since the curses are kind of like the monsters in this series, so they need to still look somewhat grotesque. Some manga readers have been hoping that the art style will switch for the Shibuya incident art. And let me tell you guys, Bruh. it's not going to happen. It's very rare for the studio to entirely switch art styles just because of an arc. Again, they're approaching simplicity likely because of the production's time and convenience. Although we got these Shibuya character designs and while it is just an image and we don't actually see what it looks like in motion, it at least gives us an idea on what to expect and well, I mean, they look great. Again, less detail, but it actually gives a more clean and clear look to it. I also love the Shibuya key visual, the lighting on the train, the colors, and the design of our characters. For those who had any concern, don't worry, Shibuya is still going to look amazing with this new style. Just because it's simple, it doesn't mean it's not going to encapsulate that dark and grim tone. Obviously, Shibuya happens at night, so it's not going to express that summer or spring feeling in that of the hidden inventory art. But yeah, to basically conclude everything, the compositing is a lot better, the simpler design will generate more fluid animation, the camera and character movements are done very well, and the complex angles are approached so uniquely that there's a creative feel to the scenes, making them more alive. Of course, let me know your thoughts on the upcoming season's new visuals in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.